All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, hopefully, you guys can all hear me. Um, I see that you're all mood, muted and uh, without video. So, um, if you want to speak up, by all means, um, you are welcome to do so. I would love to hear you and or see you. That would be fantastic. Um, alternatively, uh, there is a chat feature, and you're more than welcome to um, type in your questions um, and answers and etc. Um, off to the side. Um, I can see that um, as well as uh, see you and hear you if you allow that to happen. All right. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for uh, maybe getting up a little bit earlier than you otherwise would and uh, joining me this morning on Zoom. Um, I really do appreciate that and I really am looking forward to getting uh, to working with you guys over the next week. Um, I know it's very short and it's been um, crazy in oh so many ways, but uh, I really do hope to um, help you guys to learn uh, during this last week um, and make this process as seamless and uh, not stressful as physically possible. And, um, let's see, uh, first and foremost, um, are there any questions that you guys, for, that you guys uh, want to propose to me? Again, you're welcome to speak up. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me. I think you can hear me. Um, you're welcome to speak up or type in the chat um, off to the right. I just had a quick question about the exam. Sure. Um, so it's just gonna be held on Blackboard and it's gonna be just pictures of the models that you gave us on the post you sent us? Yeah, um, that is a great question. Um, and uh, let's just start right there. Um, so yes, your practical exam is scheduled um, on Blackboard during your university assigned lecture exam period. So hopefully you guys still have that time slot open. Um, your lecture exam is asynchronous. And so Dr. Garcia said, you know, it's okay, I can use that slot. Um, so it will be open on Blackboard for just those two hours. Um, and I will be available right here on Zoom so that if you guys have questions or need to see the model from a different perspective, because I know um, sometimes it's a little bit weird to see um, to see photographs. Um, and so I can you know, show it to you in three dimensions and you can ask about it and clarify exactly what I'm getting at. Um, and so uh, I have a practical exam that I've made for another class. So I want to show you guys what that looks like um, so that you know a little bit about what to expect. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. Um, do, do, do. So um, again, this is a practical exam uh, made for another class. So these are by these are certainly not the uh, structures or images that you will be seeing. Um, on your Blackboard page, uh, you will see um, something that says, you know, lab practical. Um, you will click on it during that time slot, um, and what you will s <laughs> ah, <laughs> uh, we'll try a different one. Um, sorry about that, everybody. How lovely, okay. Again, this is not your class. Um, so what you will see is something similar to this. So here is a picture of one of our models. Um, in fact, it is one that I introduced to you guys on the videos. Um, and what you'll see is structure A and an arrow and structure B and an arrow. And so when you scroll down, um, what you will see is a, um, a fill in the blank section, right? So for A, you would type in corpus uh, callosum, right? And for B, you would um, say the cerebellum. Right? Um, and then you'll go on to the next question. Right? And so um, a couple important um, things to note about this. Um, because this is on Blackboard, it will grade for spelling. Um, and so what I encourage you guys to do is to have um, accessible uh, your, sorry, let me pull this up as well. Um, the handout that I gave you guys, right? So this is the handout. Um, I uh, recommended that you guys use this as you watch the videos I posted to YouTube and essentially, you know, label, you know, here's the liver, here's the stomach and so on and so forth. And so if you have that, 
that handout available to you as you're taking the practical exam, um, you can make sure that you are spelling the terms 100% correct. Um, and so really, you know, this is just an assessment of your identification and not your spelling. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, any other questions about, um, about the format? Um, the format of the practical exam. Okay, very good then. Um, in general, if you guys have questions as you go along, um, you're more than welcome to email me via um, the email that I provided on Blackboard. Um, and, you know, of course, um, I really do, we all, right, on behalf of Dr. Herman and Dr. Garcia and myself, like, we're all so thankful for your patience um, and perseverance. Um, we're really sorry that things have gotten so crazy. Um, there have been many, many technical difficulties along the way, and um, as you guys are surely experiencing yourselves, um, there's a fairly steep learning curve um, and a lot of unforeseen challenges, and so, um, thank you guys so much for sticking it out. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping that this last week of the semester will go as smoothly as physically possible. Okay. All right. um, again, are there any, uh, any questions that you guys have for me at this point? Um, I know that we haven't met before, and so this is a little bit, a uh, little bit strange, but, um, now, hopefully, I have a question. Sure. Hello. Um, good morning. Um, how many questions is going to be on the practical? Also a fantastic question. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. I think the shortened list that I gave you guys um, this weekend, um, gosh, there's probably only like 60 or 70 terms. And so um, what I would like to do is have 30 questions, so 30 regular points and then four extra credit questions. So pretty much you can get four um, labels wrong and still get 100%. Okay, all right, thank you. No problem, um, does that seem reasonable? Um, I am more than open to your feedback. That's definitely reasonable because we used to have like 70 plus questions before, so that's much better. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I know that um, this is not what would normally be happening, but um, under the circumstances, I think that 34 is um, a good way to assess your understanding or enough to assess your understanding. I have another question. Are we just gonna like log on to Blackboard and there's gonna be a tab for the practical? Absolutely. Like, okay, and it's timed, right? Or? Um, it will be timed. Um, it will be two hours. Um, okay. And so two hours to answer 34 questions is a lot of time. Yeah, all right, that helps. Great. Thank you for asking questions. I appreciate it, guys. Um, and of I just have another one. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, I think one email said that the practical was going to be the fifth, and the, another one might have said it was going to be the sixth. So should I just look at the syllabus to see like which day it's going to fall across? Um, I'm so sorry about that. Um, no, as okay. you might imagine, my brain's a little bit fried. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure yours is too. Um, yeah. Cinco de Mayo. Tuesday, okay. the 5th. Um, so it's supposed to be during the time when you normally would have lecture. Correct. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, I know that you guys surely have other classes and I wouldn't want to conflict with your other classes. Right. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you. No problem. All right. Um, all right, so at this point, I want to uh, just walk you through um, the resources that I gave you. Um, I saw that like 18 people watched the first video, and so I get the impression that it's hopefully somewhat understandable. Um, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, as I just showed you guys, uh, here is the handout um, that I gave you. These are pictures of our models. Um, and what I would recommend you doing is just, um, you know, watching the videos and literally, oh, gosh, sorry. Technology is still being a thing here. Here we go. Um, 
So like drawing a line, right? So here's the duodenum and here is where we see the duodenum right here. Um, and so then you would have these resources accessible to you when you're taking the practical exam. Um, and so the videos I made, um, again, you should recognize where, uh, <laughs> where this is. Um, so these are our models. Um, I've broken them up according to uh, organ system. Um, yeah, organ systems. Um, and within that same playlist are the uh, videos that Dr. Herman was able to make for you guys. Um, and so you are more than welcome and in fact encouraged to get both of our perspectives. Um, but of course, I'll be the one making the practical exam. And so, um, you know, just the structures that I show you are going to be relevant to that test. Okay, um, any, any questions or clarification needed on that? Okay, um, so um, I'm assuming um, from the fact that there aren't further questions that you guys feel um, pretty comfortable with the, um, uh, with the format and what's happening for the rest of the semester in the lab. If not, you are welcome to speak up or type in your feedback or email me after this, it's all good. Um, I just had a quick question as well. Um, so, did you say that we were allowed to take the exam um, only like from a specific time period? Or Correct. are we allowed, so it's not accessible all day then for two hours? Correct. Um, and the idea behind that is that, um, you know, I, I know that you guys have been floundering a little bit um, with actually learning these structures. Um, and so I really want to be sure that I am available to you guys um, for any clarification that I can possibly provide. Um, and so I've kept the test open just during your lecture final exam window um, so that I will be on Zoom. And if you have a question about what the picture is showing um, or you need to see it from a different perspective or whatever, um, I am here and I can literally grab the models and show them to you and answer any questions. Um, and so that's, that's why it's a shorter window than it might otherwise be. Uh, okay, thank you. No problem. All right. Um, I think someone posed a question in the comment box. In the comment. Oh, oh yes, very good, very good. Um, so about the grades being locked in, yes, that is still in place. That is, um, to clarify the question, um, the policy of Dr. Garcia, Dr. Herman, and myself um, is that whatever grade you had before spring break is the lowest that your grade can possibly go. That is, you can still improve your grade, right? Don't just check out and not, you know, do anything else with us this semester. Um, but as long as you participate in the classes, activities, in the lectures, in the lab, et cetera, um, your grade cannot get any lower than it was before spring break. Okay. Um, hopefully, uh, your grade improves quite considerably. Um, so if you, uh, you know, didn't do as well as you wanted to on the first practical exam, um, not a big deal. You are here, so you're automatically improving that grade by 10%, right? So a full letter grade, your grade is um, getting better in the lab. Um, also, there are those extra credit questions on the final practical exam. Um, there are fewer terms, and hopefully um, all of these things together will help you um, to bring your grades up. Um, does that make sense? Is that, is that okay? That makes sense. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. All right, um, let's see. Speaking of the first practical, um, I get the impression that some people missed the first practical exam um, and were supposed to be able to make it up, of course, after spring break. And while that just didn't happen, obviously, um, I am offering an opportunity to make up that practical if you haven't taken it before. And so if you are in that position, um, shoot me an email, write your email address into the chat um, on Zoom here. Um, 
contact me in some way, I do have a makeup opportunity for you. Um, all right, so um, at this point, I think that's all of the logistical things. Um, does anyone want to see any of the models? I know that I just sent all of this information out to you this weekend, and you might not have had a chance to watch the videos just yet, um, but I do have the models accessible right here. Um, and so, uh, you know, we can literally like walk through the models if you want. Um, if not, if you just want to use the YouTube videos, that's okay as well. Um, so this is, this is your time. I am here for you. You can walk through them. Walk through models? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, let's see. So since I have this available, um, we'll start with this. Um, this is, of course, the, um, a model of the urinary system. Right, so um, it's kind of <laughs> kind of abstract. This is your abdominal aorta. This blue vessel here is your inferior vena cava, and so the rest of the abdominal pelvic cavity is removed, and all we can see are the vessels, the kidneys, um, and if we go all the way down here, we can see the pubic symphysis. So this is the anterior side of the body, right? And so vessels and um, urinary structures. Um, on this model, um, all I want you guys to know is that these are the kidneys. Right. The renal artery is red, the renal vein is blue, and you guys might know that already from um, a previous practical. Okay. Uh, urine is made as a filtrate of the blood right here, as you guys are probably familiar from lecture, and urine is then drained down the ureters or ureters all the way down to the urinary bladder, and this happens to be a male urinary bladder. Here are the seminal vesicles. Uh, but here is the urinary bladder. Um, on a practical, please be sure to tell me urinary bladder as opposed to just bladder, right? We also have a gallbladder, so um, please be specific, right? Um, if we look inside the urinary bladder, ah, maybe not, um, you can see that there's a white triangle. That white triangle is called the trigon, um, and so that's clinically significant because that's often where UTIs are going to actually infect. And finally, here is the urethra. Okay, so this pink tube right here. Um, any questions or clarification needed on that model? Um, okay. If this, sorry, what was that? I said no, I'm good. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you so much. All right, awesome. So, I'm finish up with the urinary system. All right, so this model right here. Um, Dr. Herman narrated, and I'm going to walk you through one more time. All right, so um, this is the kidney. All right, the kidney can be broken into a couple different regions. All right, so um, the outer region, just like your brain, is called the cortex. Right, we have an adrenal cortex, we have a renal cortex, we have a cerebral cortex. So cortex is really just like the outside of the kidney. So here is the renal cortex, and in the middle, the deeper part, um, is called the renal medulla, okay? Um, I like to tell my students, um, when in doubt, just say renal because chances are um, that's halfway correct, right? Um, but anyway, renal cortex and renal medulla. The medulla is broken into these triangles, right? They're actually 3D, so we call them renal pyramids, right? So the structure here is the renal pyramid. The region is the renal medulla. And as you probably know from the lecture, um, blood is filtered um, by the nephron, right, structures of the nephron, up here at this corticomedullary boundary. And so we can look at that in more detail over here in this part of the model. All right. Um, let's see. What we have is these little spheres. Right, are, um, the blood vessels are called the glomerulus, and the little C shape around the glomerulus is called either Bowman's capsule or the glomerular capsule. Um, I will accept both. Um, and when you look at that, um, that handout that I gave you guys, um, you'll see like Bowman's slash glomerular, pick one and go with it. Either one is okay for me, okay? Um, for a little bit more detail on that, we can look at this part of the model, okay? The blood vessels are the glomerulus, around the blood vessels, this C shape right here is Bowman's capsule, 
And this is where filtrate is formed. And it's going to first go into this tube, the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay. Zooming back out. Okay. From, doo -doo -doo, uh, from Bowman's capsule, we enter this first squiggly part right here, the proximal convoluted tubule. Filtrate dips down into the medulla. In this half right here, this is the descending limb. Turns around and starts coming back up again in the ascending limb. Both descending and ascending limbs are called the loop of Henle. Once the nephron ascends back into the cortex, gets a little bit squiggly again, and that is the distal convoluted tubule. Now we can see the DCT of this nephron and this nephron and lots of other nephrons dumps into this draining structure called the collecting duct. Right, the collecting duct, um, many collecting ducts that is, is going to drain into this funnel shape right here, which is called the minor calyx. And so let's zoom out again in this part of the model. Okay. All right, so some perspective here is a collecting duct and a bunch of nephrons. They drain into the minor calyx. Right, we can see that a single renal pyramid drains into the minor calyx. Um, hopefully you guys can see that and it's not too, too blurry, um, but I think the resolution on the YouTube videos is so much better. Okay, so minor calyx drains urine from the entire renal, entire renal pyramid. Multiple minor calyces, right, so minor calyx, minor calyx, join together to form a major calyx. Now multiple major calyces, one, two, and three, are going to join together to form the renal pelvis. Right, so this big cavernous region fills with urine before the urine drains out the ureter or ureter towards the urinary bladder. Okay. Um, so is there anything about any urinary system models that you guys want me to go over again? Okay, assuming science means no, that's good. Arbitrarily, next model here is uh, the uterus. Right? There's lots of details on this model, but in the interest of, oh my gosh, there's one week left to learn everything, we're only doing a couple structures. Okay, so this is the ovary. Right? Um, we can see the follicular development as well as the corpus luteum here. This event shows us ovulation. Um, and in reality, ovulation, um, Kind of spits out the secondary oocytes and the corona radiata into a space before it gets into the fallopian tube. And so um, we actually have these little like finger-like projections that create a current and kind of like suck in the secondary oocyte. And I bring that up because these little finger-like projections kind of wrapping around the ovary here, um, those are called fimbriae. And we'll take a look at those on the next model as well. Okay, so ovary, fimbriae. Uterine or fallopian tube. Um, uterine is the um, more modern term and fallopian is a more antiquated term, but probably the one you're familiar with. All right, so uterine or fallopian tube, pick which one you like and go with it. Uh, this entire organ here is the uterus. Right? And what I want you to see is that there are two different colored layers. Right? The innermost layer here, the darker layer is called the endometrium. Um, that's where implantation occurs if there's a fertilized egg, um, or it's what is shed every month in a menstrual cycle. Um, and the rest of this uh, lighter pink color here is the myometrium, so the very muscular layer of the uterus. The neck of the uterus or opening is called the cervix, leading into the vagina. Okay. Questions about this model? And so if you do have questions during the lab practical, um, that will look largely like what we're experiencing right now. You'll say, hey, question number one, you know, what exactly are you asking? And I'll say, hey, here it is. This is the layer that I'm looking for. Okay. All right. Um, so this is the second and final female reproductive system model. Um, what I want to point out first um, is that this is the uterus, right, and the ovary, 
right? The ovaries are way over here to the side. Now, as I said before, the ovaries um, have these little finger-like projections. They are red on this model. So these are the fimbriae. This is the ovary. Fallopian or uterine tube. And here is a section through. All right, first of all, this is the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder drains ur uh, urine out the urethra. So that's this tube right here, urethra. Uh, urinary bladder. This little circular muscle right here in the pelvic floor is called the external urethral sphincter. Okay. This blue structure here is the clitoris, labia minora, labia majora, vagina, cervix, and the uterus. Note how it's always um, sitting on top of pretty much uh, the urinary bladder. Um, so if you're pregnant, of course, that's why mom has to pee all the time, right? Because baby is literally sitting right on top of her poor bladder. Um, all right, so if we look a little bit closer, we can see again, there's a dark red layer lining the uterus. That's the endometrium. And there is a thicker, lighter pink here, which is called the myometrium. All right, final structures here. Um, this is the end of the digestive system. So the straight portion, the rectum, and the hole itself, the actual exit for feces is the, uh, is the anus. Now, Dr. Herman talks about the internal external, or sorry, the internal anal sphincter, the external anal sphincter. Um, in the interest of, you know, you guys have a lot to learn, those are not going to be on the practical. Okay. Um, so any, questions about either of these two female models? Um, I don't have any. What was that? I don't have any. I'm good. Okay. Um, is this still helpful? Yeah, you... it's helpful. Okay. Awesome. Um, I don't want to waste your time. Your time is very precious. Right. Male reproductive model. Okay, uh, first, the testis, oops, sorry, here we go. Um, the testis is the section through the testis. Over here, this is um, a full testis. Um, this is where sperm and testosterone and other androgens are made. This uh, kind of tan structure, like wrapping around the testis, um, is the epididymis, and that's where sperm is stored. On this side, we can see this little squiggly tube in the back here. That is also the epididymis. Okay, uh, more external anatomy. Um, the head of the penis is called the glands, and the skin that holds uh, the testis, the epididymis, um, nerves, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, all those things, muscles, um, the skin is called the scrotum. All right, so we'll follow this tube here, the vas deferens. Um, so you can see it's kind of pink in color, right? It wraps up and around the urinary bladder all the way around to the back of the urinary bladder, where it's going to join with some other structures. Okay, um, this kind of, um, it looks almost porous. Um, so this structure here is called um, either the seminal vesicle or the seminal gland. It's where like 70% of the volume of semen is made. Um, and so the sperm from the vas deferens, um, the most of the semen from the seminal vesicles and the other 30% of the volume of semen is made from, um, made by the prostate gland right here. So the prostate gland is sitting right under the urinary bladder. Okay. Now, take a section through. All right, once again, uh, this is the urinary bladder, right? No, uterus sitting on top of it, right? So the urinary bladder. Um, this long tube right here is the urethra, so that's where um, urine is going to exit and also semen is going to exit. Um, the male urethra is actually broken up into three different parts. Those are not on this practical. Okay, uh, what I do want to point out though is that within the prostate gland, there is this little duct right here. This is called the ejaculatory duct. Um, and right before an ejaculation, this is where um, fluid from the prostate, seminal gland, and the sperm are going to be stored before peristaltic contractions push the semen out the urethra, okay? Um, 
within the pelvic floor, just like on the female model that I showed you, is this little um, white circle. That is the external urethral sphincter. Okay. Um, the penis is actually made up of three different, uh, what are called bodies of tissue. All right, so these kind of stripy portions right here, this makes up one of two um, singular corpus cavernosum. Um, you might also see it called corpora cavernosa. That's the plural form. All right, so you can tell me either one, but on the list that I gave you, it is only singular. Okay, um, surrounding the urethra, you'll see it's a lot spottier. All right, so those spots are indicating the sponginess of this corpus spongiosum. Okay, so this um, is not an erectile body. It, um, it remains spongy so that the semen can actually be ejected during an ejaculation. Okay. Um, all right, just to be thorough here, um, just like on the female model, the straight portion at the end of the colon is called the rectum, right, and the hole itself is called the anus. Right? Again, Dr. Herman talked about the external and internal anal sphincters, those are not on this practical. Okay. Um, any questions about this model? Okay, there's one more um, that is very similar to this model, but we can see the last structure of the male reproductive system. I'll be right back. Okay, um, so same kind of thing going on. Testis, epididymis, scrotum, glands, penis. Um, we look, let's see, look inside, all right? The white kind of stripy area is the corpus cavernosum. The purple spotty area is the corpus spongiosum. The tan tube is the urethra. This gland right here is the prostate, and we can still see that tiny little ejaculatory duct. All right, what we can see on this model that we can't see on the other, um, you guys can appreciate this right here is called the bulbourethral gland so it is also embedded within the pelvic floor just like the external urethral sphincter uh, this is going to release pre-ejaculatory fluid um, essentially sperm really likes um, an alkaline environment but urine is acidic and so this essentially flushes out um, the urethra making it compatible for sperm um, also provides lubrication etc okay, so everything else is the same on this model um, any questions about reproductive system? All right then. Um, last two systems. All right, you guys have surely seen this model before. Um, see, the only things that are going to be tested on this model uh, for this particular practical are part of the lymphatic system. Um, and so we're looking for the tonsils. I'm very appreciative of them these days. Um, so all the way at the back of the nasal cavity at the top of the pharynx or the throat um, is this tonsil right here, the pharyngeal tonsil, okay, also called your adenoid. All right, moving down the pharynx, here's the uvula. On either side um, of essentially the back of your mouth, you have a pair of tonsils. These are called the palatine tonsils because they are right next to your soft palate. Okay, and finally, um, the back of the tongue, it looks like there's a little, I don't know, weird looking extension off of the tongue. Um, the other two uh, tonsils here are yellow and kind of splotchy like a gland normally is portrayed. Not so with the lingual tonsil. However, this is the lingual tonsil. So lingual for tongue, tonsil for, well, tonsil. Okay, so that's it for that model. Leads us to this guy. I will try my best to make this um, understandable here. All right, so for the digestive system, we have three pairs of extrinsic salivary glands. I am not requiring you guys to know exactly what those are called. For example, you don't have to know that this is the parotid gland, but this little yellow chunky thing and these little yellow chunky things are salivary glands, right? specifically the extrinsic salivary glands. Okay. So that's the only thing I would ask up here. All right, next, um, if we get the heart and lungs out of the way, 
um, what we can see is that behind the respiratory system, so this kind of blue right here is the trachea and the bronchi, this brownish tube back here is the esophagus. Right? And as we know, the esophagus dumps food that you just ingested, swallowed, and finally it ends up in the stomach. All right, guys, I'm trying here. Okay, <laughs> it's not a perfect system, but hopefully helpful nevertheless. Okay, so um, really simple. There are so many different structures that we could talk about on the digestive system. All we care about for this practical are the liver. We look under the liver, the gallbladder. Next, the stomach. We turn the stomach around, all right? So here's the cardiac region, here's the greater curvature, pyloric region. We don't care about all of those things. What we care about for the practical is this right here, all right? We can see that it's kind of a circular little structure. This is the pyloric sphincter, and it controls flow of food from the stomach into the next part of your GI tract. Okay, so in order to take a look at this, um, we can take it out, right? Under the stomach, Right, so the stomach would usually be sitting right here. Right behind the stomach is this yellow chunky gland called the pancreas. Right, we can see that there's a, um, a white little duct here. This is how digestive enzymes um, and pancreatic juices end up in the small intestine. And so this here is the beginning of the small intestine. It's called the duodenum or the duodenum. Right? To see the rest of it, we need to look behind this entire chunk of intestines. Right, so this tube right here um, is retroperitoneal, so it's not actually covered by the peritoneum like the rest of the um, intestines. Um, this is the duodenum, right, very short. All right, while we're back here, I want to show you that um, all of this tissue right here is called the mesenteries. Right? It's a double membrane of peritoneum. Okay, and so that's where uh, fat is stored and blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, nerves, and this is how all of those things actually get to the rest of the intestines. Okay, so from the duodenum, we move into the jejunum, right, the next section of small intestine, and finally into the ileum. Okay, the ileum is going to pass food into the colon or the large intestine via this structure here. And so to appreciate this, taking a piece off, and what we can see is, hopefully, um, this little triangle right here at the end of my index finger, Right, that triangle is called the ileocecal valve. It assures one-way flow from the ileum into um, the large intestine. Right? So food would then flow up. But note that the ileocecal valve isn't all the way at the bottom of the intestine. Instead, there's this little blind-ended outpocketing way down here. This is called the cecum. Right? So that's pretty much a nice um, hotel for our, uh, our gut flora. Right. Sticking off the end of the cecum, I turn this guy around, is this tiny little tail called the vermiform appendix. All right. So now, um, food waste feces at this point is going to be pushed via peristaltic waves, um, waves up the ascending colon, across the transverse colon, down the descending colon, and the descending colon actually starts to curve and form an S shape, right? So this is all the way on the left side of your body, and so your rectum is in the middle of your body, and so we have to get the colon to the middle of your body, and that happens with this S shape, the sigmoid colon. Right? So descending is straight, S shape is sigmoid, and so where this leaves off, um, on the model, it has been um, hypothetically cut. Okay. So this is the end of the sigmoid colon. Right? We can see that it straightens out, right? and that straightening out um, is the beginning of the rectum. Right? And of course, we can only see the anus on the two male and female pelvic models. All right. And that was like a semester's worth of <laughs> um, anatomy models in 10 minutes. Um, so, questions, comments, concerns, feedback, anything you guys have for me. I just want to know if you're going to post this recording up for us also, because that would be helpful. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, 
because you just I see you're recording the Zoom, so like if you post the Zoom for us to watch, that's helpful. For sure, for sure. Um, I can make that happen. Um, yeah, it's always good to get multiple perspectives. Um, I will work on uploading that. Of course, it takes a little while to convert and upload and all that kind of stuff. Um, but when it's ready, it will be on that playlist, um, including Dr. Herman's videos, my narrated videos, and of course now this Zoom meeting. Thank you. No worries. We're all learning so much about technology these days. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I did not have a YouTube channel before this mess, but uh, here we are. All right. Anyway, um, irrelevant. Any final thoughts? I just wanted to say thank you. This was a, definitely like a huge clarification like from this portion of the semester, so it helped. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, again, I'm really sorry that you guys have had such a rough time. Um, but, you know, we're all here for you and um, I will do my best and I am open to your feedback and I can modify things accordingly in the last, you know, seven, eight days of the semester. Okay. All right. Well, I guess um, I do have a question because you sure. said um, something about extra credit, but like what if you did good on your exam one? Because you have your extra credit put on your exam two? Or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, all of these, like the 10% that you're getting just for being here is going to go on that practical regardless of how you did. Um, and also, you know, you'll get those four extra credit questions on your practical exam, again, regardless of how well you're doing in class. All right, thank you. No worries. Um, so if you did not take practical exam one, make sure you reach out to me so that we can schedule that makeup exam. Um, in the absence of any other questions, um, I will bid you all adieu and um, good luck studying uh, this week. And don't forget to block out the time for next Tuesday morning, 8.30 to 10.30 to take your final practical. Right. Thank you so much, guys. Have a Thank wonderful you. day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.